Thank you everyone for joining uh, this time, uh, whatever time is for you, morning, evening, afternoon, night. Uh, thank you, especially uh, Catherine and Gavin for the opportunity, for running these events, for hosting things like these. Um, I really appreciate the community effort you guys are doing. Uh, um, in terms of the session itself now i skip this slide because gavin already explained about me and i guess you are tired of hearing all about reza so let's just skip into the <laughs> title itself okay uh i i start this with a little bit of like background why this happened to be uh something i thought good to write about it um Power BI these days is quite different from what it used to be like five years ago, even what it used to be like seven, eight years ago. Now you might wonder seven years, years ago, we didn't really had Power BI, which is of course correct, but we had Power BI like separately as like its own component, Power Query, DAX, um, separately in Power Pivot. So we, we actually had Power BI. We can really say we had Power BI for something like 10 years now. But from the time that it has been really released as a tool called Power BI, it was like 2015 and it is five years. Now, Power BI is still young. Uh, you might say it's like five years now and many people are using it, but still considering like a software development cycle, Power BI is considered young. Compare it to SQL Server. is a technology for like something around 25 years now, uh, or many other technologies, right? Uh, with those technologies, uh, the software development cycle is much more mature these days, and you see totally different view of that technology in the um, positions around, in the job recruitment, advertisements, in many, in many things around it, you see that maturity. With Power BI, we haven't reached that stage yet. It is much better what we have these days compared to what it was in 2016 or 2017. I remember in 2016, 2017, I have seen job advertisement that said uh, we want uh, someone familiar with Power BI with 15 years experience. Even advertisers didn't really know that Power BI isn't out for that many years. So so these days we, we see uh, like only a few of these mistakes, things like that, which shows that Power BI is getting around, people are getting to know it, um, but still things are uh, building around it. So when a technology is new, you expect um, the framework around it to be built up gradually. Uh, and that is what's happening in Power BI. A lot of people who are developing solution with Power BI these days, they are, hmm, what we can call as like accidental Power BI developers. Like we have a term called accidental DBA, we can have like a term called accidental Power BI developer, which basically means that this person was not a developer before, right? Maybe didn't had any development experience. It came from a background that for some reason at that point of the time needed to do some analysis uh, with the data, so it's moved to a place that said, okay, you need to go and build this Power BI solution. Uh, many of them came from uh, Excel background because they had a lot of these analysis in Excel, uh, like similar analysis, let's say they had an Excel file which they maintained and they had um, uh, many calculations in there, like a small little data model with a lot of analysis there. Now um, they heard about Power BI is a great tool, it has a great visualization, uh, and they started doing it over there. We have a lot of people coming from that uh, side. We have a lot of people coming from accounting background, from many like business side coming from uh, those sides into the Power BI development. And of course we have some people who had development background, like someone who have been BI developer, BI consultant, 
they also came into the developing Power BI solution. But uh, I would call that minority of the Power BI developers these days. Majority of Power BI developers are coming either from Excel background or from business background. And when they come into Power BI with that background, they they start like learning a bit of everything to build a Power BI solution. Power BI like looks simple at the beginning. You go and see these sessions called dashboard in a day <clears throat> uh, and dashboard in an hour. We even have that dashboard in an hour, which uh, which tells you that you can build a Power BI solution in one hour, right? Uh, which is true. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> But in order to maintain that solution, in order to use that solution in a real world scenario, you need to enhance that quite a lot. And that means you need to learn a lot of skills around it. It's not just bringing that uh, data set into Power BI, putting a visualization out there, changing the colors and everything works fine. That is good for, let's say, one simple demo showing to the boss. But after that, they re the request comes in and then you have to know what you are doing, right? So people will start getting learning these things, right? They start with learning, well, this is visualization, this is called Power Query, this is called DAX, this is uh, what the data model looks like. Now I build my solution, I have to publish to the service. So what is service? What should I do over there? What are the administration things around it? What is gateway? What should I be doing there? Uh, how can I put this whole architecture together? Uh, what if I want to do some predictive analytics um, using AI features, things like that? So it comes with a lot of features. If you go deep into Power BI, there are many things that you have to learn and you have to spend like sometimes uh, years to learn it. It's not uh, it's not something that you can learn in a day, in a week, in a month. It's it's a lot of content. So so based on all of these, I came up with this uh, uh, with this list of roles. And um, a little bit of like disclaimer before I start this is that uh, when I published this as a blog uh, article, which you can access it from Red Cat website right now. Uh, I got some comments, people saying that, well, I, I'm i doing my Power BI job and I'm doing two, two or three of these roles. Uh, and, and that is absolutely fine. I mean, uh, it is possible that you do two or three of these roles. It is possible that you do all of these roles. Uh, what I'm saying is that in, in a few years, we would see separation of these roles more and more. If you see these days, like a job advertisement saying that, we want Power BI developer probably in five years, sometimes maybe even 10 years, six years, seven years, you'll see advertisements saying that we want a Power Query developer, we want a DAX developer, we want uh, a Power BI architecture uh, architect, right? You'll see that separation. But it doesn't mean that if you do one of these roles, you can't do others, right? Depends on your capacity, depends on uh, the type of work you are doing, it depends on the size of project, uh, depends on many of these, you can get the combination of these. What I'm explaining is just uh, roles and what that person in that role would do, um, then how that combined in different organizations is totally dependent on many other factors. Okay, uh, so, uh, and also one other thing I have to mention is that um, Considering that whole revolution of self-service, uh, Power BI uh, roles has changed a lot with that. And I have like a separate blog post explaining that as well. Um, um, Power BI when first came in, we had like a different BI department. People have been building BI solutions. Everyone was asking them to go and build BI solutions for us. These days, this is like totally changed. We have everyone building their own solution. The BI team is somehow helping them to build their own solution. Uh, so that also leads us into, again, the same structure uh, I'm going to explain. So I'm skipping that part, but we can talk about that in the Q&A. Uh, one of the first roles I'm going to mention is the data engineer. Now, data engineer in... Mm, in traditional BI tools, we had these uh, pers these people uh, 
let's say, professional in using tools such as SSI, SQL Server Integration Services, Informatica, uh, even normal SQL scripting. They use these uh, tools or the SQL language to mash up the data, to combine different tables together, to build a, a simpler format of the data to be consumed in the reporting. This is what the data engineer should do, should like combine data sources together, sometimes merge them together, sometimes append them, clean the data, um, do any filtering required, um, and then um, prepare that data to be loaded into the Power BI, right? We can call it Power Query Developer, but basically this person is a person who does the data mash up, the data clean up and things around it. Uh, this person is a person that needs to be uh, good at Power Query. Power Query, fortunately, mostly is a graphical interface, but it has a <clears throat> it has a scripting language behind the scene called M. Uh, I strongly suggest learning about that if you are doing a lot with Power Query because learning that language helps your Power Query statements to be much much better. The next one is a data modeler, which is kind of related to the topic of uh, the book that I have released yesterday. Now, data modeling is a little bit different from Power Query or different from even DAX. What data modeling is? Data modeling is just like a conceptual design. You don't do data modeling with Power Query. You don't do data modeling with writing DAX statement. You do data modeling with a uh, pen and paper. Right, you draw things. You say this is my table. This is um, my customer table, uh, customer dimension, and dimensions are let's say my descriptive table. I have like some fact tables. This is how they connect to each other. I built like a star schema. Uh, why this part is important? Because a good data model can be a base, a good base foundation for the entire solution you build on top of it. If you don't have a good data model, your solution might not stand still. It moves around, sometimes collapse. You might need to bring tons of calculations on top of it because the data model is not right, right? Uh, so that data model is a person who actually understand the business requirement, can translate those business requirements into a reporting data model based on some principles of fact table, dimension table, star schema, all of those things, and builds this data model. And then this data model that is built, like that is designed in that pen and paper style should be fed by Power Query. So Power Query developer actually takes that data model and build the data in that framework and feed it into the, into the Power BI uh, using that stage and as i said you can have one person doing both jobs it's fine data modeler usually is needed highly at the beginning of power bi solution when you move <clears throat> ahead um, data modeler more would be only needed when you bring more data into that so it would be more like a advisory things when you go uh, a little bit further and tax developer obviously you need someone to do some uh, some analytics on top of your solution. There are things that can be pre-calculated and we do them in Power Query mostly. For example, if you have a sales column, if you have a profit column, if you want to calculate, I'm uh, sorry, sales column and cost column, if you want to calculate a margin column, normally we do those in Power Query, right? In that stage of data preparation. So that is Power Query developer doing it. However, um, there are things that can be done much better after loading data into Power BI, such as year-to-date calculation, calculating stock on hand, things like that. Uh, DAX developer is a person who is familiar with DAX. DAX is uh, a language that can be difficult sometimes. Difficult not in terms of the language structure, language structure is really simple actually, in terms of like understanding how this language behind the scene works, because that complicates the whole thing of writing uh, a DAX expression. And there are like 
tons of resources to learn about DAG. SQL BI obviously is one of the best uh, places I recommend. They have books, one of their books published recently, DAX Patterns, um, which I highly recommend you to have a look if you are dealing with DAX. So DAX developer is mm, essentially working very closely with the other two roles, with Power Query developer and with the data modeler to be able to bring extra analysis analytics on top of that data model. And the reason that this developer should work very closely with the other roles is that, for example, if you are adding a margin column, of course, this can be done in DAX, but it is better to be done in the Power Query. So that is why they need to have like sitting in a round table discussing that, well, this is the best place to do this calculation. This is the best place to do that calculation. Uh, and based on that, and do the calculation in their relevant places versus what I see in many implementation, unfortunately, is that because, for example, the person is good at DAX, they just bring every calculation in DAX. You see like a Power BI solution with thousands of measures, which might kill the performance. Or you see someone good at Power Query try to do everything in Power Query, which also doesn't make sense, right? So these are separate things uh, that, um, that you need to have a combination of all of these. And of course, you need someone to build the actual visualization. Now, this looks like a simple job, and you might say, well, my tax developer, my Power Query developer, my data modeler can do that. Yes, of course, they can do that. But uh, in order to have a proper visualization, in order to have something that others understand it really well, you need someone with a good user experience, uh, um, UX design experience, someone who understands the colors, someone who understands the basics of visualization, the principles of the visualization. And those are things that you need to learn, right? There are books about the visualization. Alberto Cairo is one of the uh, resources I highly recommend about visualization. Uh, he doesn't have a book on Power BI visualization. He is just all about like how to use each visual, more conceptual design uh, rather than technology oriented. But I highly recommend that. So there are tons of resources if you want to really be good report visualizer. Um, and you need totally like different personality of uh, people building this compared to uh, those who are building. Uh, um, let's say the data model, because those are more like backend stuff. This is front end. You need someone with good graphic understanding. So like totally different things. Um, in a small project, you might do all because like there are not that much budget. There is uh, just a little visualization. So you do a bit of everything that makes sense. But when we move towards like bigger Power BI implementation, in the future, this would be totally separate. And sometimes you have more report visualizers than data modeler because that's more centric. You have more people building visualization on top of that centric uh, data set. Uh, in some models, not everywhere, but in some models, you may need to use some of the built-in AI features in Power BI. And when we talk about built-in AI features, there are uh, different places you can get those, like you can get these built-in AI features as some visuals in Power BI. You might already have used some of these, uh, the composition tree, uh, the Q&A, uh, some, some visuals like that. We have a lot of blog articles on these written by Leila. Of course, I'm not an um, AI person at all. Uh, what is applied data scientist? Why we call it applied data scientist? This is a person who might not really know about data science algorithms and still doing AI work. How well using these predefined AI functions? For example, if you go and build a decomposition tree, you don't really n need to know how the uh, multi-factor classification works or how, uh, what is, let's say, the um, the algorithm behind the scene and things like that. Understanding those would, would be good, but it's not needed. Applied data scientist is someone with not that deep understanding of the engine, but can use the tool, right? So imagine uh, AI is like a mm, super car. Right. 
you have designed a supercar, the driver of that supercar might not know how that car uh, built in the engine, but he's a good driver. He can drive this anywhere you like, right? So applied data scientist is someone like that, right? You need these people if you are going to use uh, the work of AI. Now, uh, AI applied data scientist work is like a little bit limited, depends on what you really want. But because this is all limited on the tool, like how much is already implemented in the tool that you can go use it, uh, normally this can't go like very deep dive. When it goes to deep dive, then you really need a data scientist. And data scientists use like heaps of tools actually. It's not just Power BI. You can see just a few of icons here. Um, a real data scientist should actually know most of these. And that is why you see data scientist jobs are like super high paid jobs because they they need to know about almost everything. They need to know about data preparation. They need to know about many tools. They need to know some languages that can analyze these data. They need to know the conceptual algorithm behind the scene to build these, right? It's a lot of things around uh, being a data scientist. Uh, and those people just live in data day by day. So if a solution really needs that level of analysis, like predictive analytics, sometimes series complex um, calculations and things like that, then you might need a data scientist advice, depends on the size again, permanent or contract or um, part-time to tackle that piece of work. And that part might not be done all in Power BI it might be done in other tools, but use the result of that in Power BI, which means that uh, this person might work with any of those other roles I explained before, like working with Power Query developer, with data modeler, with DAX developer, with all of these to, to understand where to bring the results, where to get the data, where to bring the result of that uh, data science exploration and things like that and how to visualize. You need an administrator. Now, for a small project, you just build it once, publish it to the service, share it with someone, uh, and you probably go to install like a gateway. But then everything starts from there. You start installing a gateway, then your gateway needs to be updated. You go and update it. You go and face a problem, an error happened here. How am I going to fix it? A user password changed, then you get into a trouble. Well, password changed, my data sets are not getting refreshed. You need to uh, get someone to go and see what's going on. So administrator is actually the person who helps with these. Now, if you have a Power BI hosted on-prem, like Power BI report server, you have more roles on the administrator side because this is actually hosted on-prem somewhere. If you have Power BI service, many of those administration things are more like cloud administration stuff, like making sure that the tenant is going all right, uh, the configuration is right. For example, not everybody can go and publish to web it's a crazy thing to do. We should control that. Um, or uh, this gateway is not designed in the right way. Like these data sources should be under another gateway. I built this gateway for direct query. I built that gateway for, let's say, uh, something else. How can I manage this gateway? Where should I install the gateway? In which server? What should be the configuration of these servers? All of these are questions that an administrator should deal with. You can't really expect a DAX developer to know about all of these things, right? This is like a totally different area. You need someone with good understanding of servers, of services, of uh, authentication processes, of policies around you know, organization. Again, this is a different personality. You need someone who can be available sometimes like when uh, when the gateway is not running when something is not running reports might not be up to date updated right so you need someone with good availability to control this or a team of people who can be sometimes 24 7 available for any challenges that might happen which is totally different style of work compared to a developer work um, you also need an architect now why architect well 
uh, you see that we have a lot of components. We have Power Query, we have DAX, we have visualization, we have administration, AI, data science, um, and there are many other tools that uh, can interact with Power BI. Like we can have other power platform tools like Power Automate, uh, Power Apps. We can have Azure Synapse uh, or Data Factory. Many other things can work with a Power BI solution behind the scene. Like you might go with like building everything in Power BI. Some other implementation might say, well, I'm using Power BI only for modeling and visualization. I'm using Informatica as your data factory for data preparation. Someone might say, I'm using Power BI only for visualization. I'm doing everything else in Azure Analysis Services, in Azure Synapse. Uh, I'm using some of like Azure machine learning things. So an architect can really help in building this scenario in saying that, well, we need these components. This is how they are going to work. These are layers of implementation. An architect is someone who understand about all of these technologies, uh, but might not understand it in a deep level. Like for example, an architect might not know exactly how to write that DAX statement, might not know exactly how to do that power query transformation, but knows that this is a good tool for doing this. This is a good tool for doing that and how they can work together. That is the essential understanding for, a, for an architect that then can place all of these together in an uh, environment that works best for that requirement. Uh, so why I'm not saying that you can do all of these? Because you already seen these are like totally different skills that some of them take, uh, take really years to understand, like that architect specifically, you can see that like how many components we can have, like even in Microsoft itself, Microsoft uh, technologies itself, we have like tons of technologies. Let that uh, uh, side, you might think that we might use other like vendors tools as well. So so it can be really uh, big uh, or any, any of other things like tax looks simple, but in fact, if you want to write uh, some real world tax scenarios, you might need to spend many times to understand it. And sometimes you would have even challenges after that, right? Or the administrator, like these are different type of things. You need to spend a lot of time to learn about these. If you think you are doing all of these at the moment, probably there are some reasons for that. One is like you accidentally moved to all of these to be done at the same time. Your project scale is not that big. You are focusing on something that can be done by one person, things like that. Why it is better to be a split? Because then you can have people specialized in their own area. Someone is good with their administration skills. So they can be a good Power BI administrator. Someone is good with uh, programming skills. They can be good at DAX or Power Query side, depends on which, uh, which one is more comfortable. Someone is good at conceptual design. Someone is good at visualization. You have different people with different skills. So why not getting them to be at their own uh, good areas? Of course, they can work on other areas. And as I said, uh, this is something that gradually will come into place. So Power BI is still young in 15 years, in 10 years, you'll see that this would be like totally separated. You'll see job advertisement with this kind of title. It might not be exactly what I mentioned here, but something close to that. Uh, in terms of like the manager point of view, the whole organization point of view, if someone leaves that does everything, is much harder to replace and get the project going compared to someone who is only responsible for one of these, because then you can go and find that particular skill set. Upskilling people in those areas is also uh, easier because then you know that this is a person who is doing visualization, so let's go and focus on visualization rather than sending this person to a DAX course. Doesn't really make sense, right? Um, and I also have like a questionnaire like which Power BI training is good for you, which is kind of related to the same rules. Like uh, these are type of things that I do, uh, then I need to do like 
visualization training. These are things that I'm uh, doing in my day job. So then I need to do uh, DAX training or things like that. So overall, uh, just a quick wrap up before Q&A. Overall, this is uh, all about uh, separation of tasks and having everyone to do the best uh, of they can do. And uh, because Power BI, um, learning Power BI is not, let's say, a simple learning curve uh, as it used to be like probably five years ago, it was like a simple tool with just simple things around it, or even before that when it was like separated components. Uh, these days it requires a lot of understanding. You, lead, you read a lot of materials, but you still see that there are much more things around it that you don't understand. So this helps you to focus on specific areas and be confident that you can do that area. The overall project can go successfully. Uh, so that was pretty much everything I wanted to say. Um, any questions, feel free to just turn on your microphone or how you are going to handle it, Gavin or Catherine? Yes, you can ask Reza directly or you can um, put your message in the chat if you like. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi Reza. Um, Hi. I have a question about the data engineer. What do you think? How will the next development of Power Query in the part of a data engineer? I see uh, we have all the ways the gap of a data warehouse principle uh, um, in the form of data warehouse because we only can have a full load or a, an incremental load, but um, it most depends on a fact table and we don't have such things like update or delete uh, a special partition and I see that there's some movement uh, I think it's data wrangling in data factory but what do you think uh, is there coming more parts for the data engineer in the data flow capabilities or so uh, definitely coming more now I can't really tell like these features or I because I basically don't know what what main features would come but uh, but I can tell you like that this is, uh, from my point of view, this is only the beginning, especially like this data flow showing you something that what path this is going towards. Data flow is more, let's say, enterprise development of a model compared to like bringing everything in one model doing self-service. So uh, Microsoft is going towards that way, <clears throat> going towards that way to have uh, to have some of the enterprise capabilities into this. Now, this might not be exactly done in the way that it is done in Azure Data Factory, in Synapse, in Data Warehouse, Azure Data Warehouse, or things like that. It might be done a little bit differently, but I reckon most of the enterprise features that we need for a, a proper data preparation scenario would come gradually. Thanks. Welcome. Other questions? So we have a question, not a question, but uh, tell us about the new book, asks uh, Cecilia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Cecilia. <laughs> so the new book, uh, yeah, I explained that like a little bit at the beginning. It's a book on uh, like that data modeler part I explained. So this is a book more related to that. Um, someone starting with a pen and paper, understanding what they should have as their Power BI report versus what we see in real world is that uh, someone say, well, I need this report and I have this data source. This is a uh, CRM database table with 600 tables. So let's go and bring all of those 600 tables or at least those tables that I know, which is like 60 of those tables. They all all related to each other. It's like a big massive model like everything connected to each other a lot of post directional relationship and not needed sometimes many too many relationships uh, a lot of challenges that mostly unfortunately what we see is that people instead of fixing the model they go and build tons of calculations to support that wrong model which means every new calculation they are going to write on top of it would be harder and harder because this is not the right model to build the base is wrong so that, that book is basically covering the base 
what you should do at the beginning, not to bring like that data as is, transform it in a better uh, way to have something that is much simpler, is performing much faster, calculation on top of it can be written much better, and that is mainly focusing on the basics, like what is the dimension table, what is the fact table, what is the star schema, why it is good to have a star schema, what are scenarios that we have like two tables, two fact tables, that, that is one of the questions I normally get in a star schema. So think things around that uh, collection of my blog articles, but um, but with some uh, some of the comments from my uh, audience applied into that as well, which is which I hope can be a good uh, help for data modelers. Um, hello, I have a quick question. Yep, yeah, sure. Uh, well, first, thank you for making this early on your side to uh, be with us. Thank you for that. My pleasure. And for the five, six different roles that you described, Reza, do you see all of them together as being part of one central team, or or will you say those roles can be split in different um, functional teams or different departments? Um, just as a quick reference, what I'm working right now. Uh, we have a small team for running the administration of Power BI, but I see myself doing a little bit of all the other ones that you described. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a little hectic, <laughs> it's a little heavy trying to help everybody. So I just would like to you know your point of view on that, all of them together in one team or do you split the functions? Um, good question. And the actual answer is actually depends, but mostly I'd say the best uh, structure would be split across multiple teams. For example, let me give you like a sample scenario. Let's say uh, in an enterprise environment, we have this uh, structure that um, there is like a BI team, right? Uh, the BI team uh, kind of control the governance and things around the BI implementation, but we also have a lot of other teams like sales team, HR team, marketing team. They have their own uh, self-service analyst. That person is already using Excel to do that, right? And if we say, no, we don't want you to do the analysis, that's wrong because that person is already doing it with Excel. So why not giving them the better tool to do that, right? So. So that means that in that kind of structure, you have like separation of roles in different teams. Your report visualizer is probably sitting in those teams. Your data modeler might be more like a central person sitting in the BI team. Your administrator, Power BI administrator might be in the BI team. The Power BI architect might be in the BI team, but sometimes you might have someone developing tax calculation in those teams. So you might have like a little bit like tax developer in some of those teams. Power query might be done here, right? It, it all depends on the implementation. This is what I'm saying because like different scenarios works differently. But you see that this can be like spread across multiple teams. If you want to really harness the power of self-service alongside with enterprise um, Deployment, you need to uh, empower everyone. You cannot say, I just do everything in my BI team. People just come and come to me and ask questions what they want because you don't have the capacity to cover that. Or you can say, I just say everyone to do their own self-service, then you won't have the governance. You would have a lot of duplication. So this definitely works best with different people in different teams combined in one. Uh, one scenario and that Power BI architect can really help in designing that structure as well. Thank you. Welcome. We, we have another question in the in the chat. So um, right. Raju's asked, what is the scope for the report developer in Synapse? Uh, well, in those scenarios, I would say well, using Synapse, I say um, you probably have your data model done in Synapse. You have your data preparation done in another tool that leads data into the Synapse. Um, then you probably need like a DAX developer and a report designer, something like that. So your report designer would still do all of those things that a normal report developer do, which is uh, 
building visualization, understanding things about visuals. Uh, mostly this is also connected to a central uh, data, um, central tabular model, which can be Azure Analysis Services. So even though you have Synapse and you have the ability to connect to it directly from Power BI, I would recommend to have like a, a tabular model or somehow like a composite model that brings some of the tables, direct query, some of the tables imported like aggregated data but those are not like a report developer task. The report developer task, I say in the signups scenario would be still the same. This person is going to build those visualization nonetheless um, that if we have everything in Power BI. Other questions? Sure. So uh, I guess what, one, one from me as well, so that, yeah. Whilst having those separate roles is great, often it's still it's very difficult to actually develop those in parallel within the tool mm -hmm. itself at the moment. So I think yes, data exactly. flows is a great step forward, but I still think those some of those things might need to be, I don't know, more manageable separately, let's say, rather than all mm -hmm. contained within the same desktop tool. And that's what we found a little bit difficult is trying to we try to have those kinds of roles but you're still constrained in some degree to a single PBIX file. I know yes. obviously the, exter the external tools is a, is a great addition. So you can use things like, um, uh, I forgot the name of it now. Tabular, <laughs> uh, editor. tabular editor, right? So, yeah. you know, that that's great, but I still think there's needs a little bit more to go. Um, yeah, that, that, that's absolutely right. So uh, we are kind of tied to the tool for all of these. And considering Power BI is not, let's say, 20 years old, so it has still a lot of space to go. But if we don't use data flows, if we don't use like shared data set, if we do everything in one Power BI file, this really makes it complicated to have like different roles to do one exactly as you mentioned kevin um so i i'd say um, like yeah like towards having this more maturity in the tool we we also need more features to make it more possible uh otherwise it would be yeah really really tough time to to say okay this is my one pbix file you do only power query you do only dax that that would be that would be really hard to adjust it that way Okay. okay, other questions? Nothing else in the chat by the looks of it, so. Yeah, I see. But I guess we are just in time. And uh, yeah, Reza, you have a uh, full day, <laughs> I guess. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, appreciated that you was here. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank, you. And thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yes, so I would stop the recording now.